Welcome, cosmic listeners, to a journey unlike any other you've embarked upon. As the vastness of space stretches out before us, so too does the vastness of our own minds. This is where the ethereal meets the extraterrestrial, where inner space meets outer space. I'm your guide, alongside my hosts, Doro and Matt, and you're tuning into the intersection of meditation and mysteries beyond our stars. Picture this, a vast universe, ever-expanding, filled with stars, galaxies, and possibilities. Now visualize our own minds equally deep, intricate, and filled with untapped potential. What if these two worlds aren't as separate as they seem? Welcome to Meditation and Aliens with Matt and Doro. I am Matt Reddy, author, artist, and activist, creator of Hive1.net, social media platform for global revolution and transformation for utopia. I'm also an elected public hospital commissioner in Jefferson County, Washington, and a amateur ufologist. I'm once again joined by Doro Kiley, life coach extraordinaire, longtime meditation practitioner and meditation teacher. Her website is creationcoach.com. Thank you for joining again today, Doro. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Matt. I'm really looking forward to this one. I have a feeling it's going to be a juicy one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've, I've several things that I want to touch on in our, uh, alien disclosure news update is, uh, but before we dive into that, anything you want to share any check-in you just want to tell us about? Well, not, not other than I think we have something here that's going to be getting more popular i would like to imagine because there's a lot going on in uh you know both both the um science and and technologies as well as obviously the ufos and uh and disclosure um i think meditation is going to become more and more important so i'm thanking you for creating this platform oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> well absolutely i really appreciate you doing this with me. I feel like this is an incredibly important topic. Uh, you know, I started out my interest in aliens and uh, UFOs just because as a curiosity, um, because I, I just started to believe these Navy pilots that said, you know, that they were seeing these things. And that just leads to it as a domino effect of, uh, I don't know, is it a domino effect or a rabbit hole, but it, it caused a cascade of discovery of if, if these UFOs are real, then there are a number of other things must be true. And it's, it seems now it's like, it's really, it's really deeply, deeply political and tied into the power structures of earth. So it's, a, it's an interesting and important topic, I think, to try to understand. Oh boy. <laughs> and it's a big one too. Yeah. So you've been, you've been uh, keeping up on the political developments and of the disclosure. Um, anything new happening there? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you know, ever since there was that, um, since David Grush testified with Ryan Graves and uh, David Fravor before Congress, that was a, maybe about two months ago. And, uh, you know, they just really established for the uh, Congress people that are interested that, that there's something in the skies. And, and Grush said, you know, the government is hiding a secret UFO alien reverse engineering program so ever since that that hearing happened they've been uh they told the congressman like congressman burchett and luna uh that they could not hear the answers to their questions their big questions like does the u.s have alien craft has anyone ever been hurt or killed to keep the secret they they were not given those answers they were told they'd have to be in a skiff a secure um, compartmentalized intelligence facility to to hear any of these answers. And finally, this week, they were allowed into a skiff. There's been this big delay process, not allowing them in there for some reason, but they, wow. they finally let them go into one of these secure rooms to apparently, supposedly get some answers. But they came out of the rooms uh, yesterday, I believe, and they told they were pretty much stonewalled. They were told that they don't have clearance 
to know the answers to some of the biggest questions. That is amazing. Yeah. And, and, and they were also told they absolutely cannot tell us anything they heard in there. And they seem to be mostly respecting that. So they've heard something. They were told they can't now talk about anything they heard. And they were not given answers to, I, I imagine, the really, really big questions. Like, like I think one of the biggest ones that's going to be a bombshell is, has anyone ever been murdered to keep this secret? Because I believe the answer to that is yes. And I think some of the names on the list of people that have been hurt over the years to keep this secret all the way back to Roswell are big. Um, such as I think JFK is going to be one that's eventually going to come out and maybe RFK too, um, and others. But it's it's a weird week because they were they they're clearly frustrated. They got finally got into this room, and now they're being stonewalled in a whole different type of way. And um, yeah, so that is that's one of the really interesting. That's sort of the interesting point we are in terms of like the U.S. Congress trying to get to the bottom of this. The the next step for them is to try to have another hearing. And so I guess the, the thing we're now waiting on is, will the new speaker of the House uh, allow them to have a, uh, a select committee, which would give Congress the ability to subpoena people, which I, would give them a lot of power. But the last speaker of the House said, uh, wouldn't do that, but he said they could have another hearing. We'll see if this new speaker is different. Um, yeah. Have so you it's, looked at him at all? The the new speaker. Do you have you learned anything about him? What's his name? Mike Johnson. Mike Johnson. Yeah. I mean, when I heard him speak, he he seemed to. I liked his sort of like you know you have a, I had a good vibe from him just like from his personality and, but as I learned, he was really involved with uh, with uh, Trump's attempt to overturn the election and so he seems to be a pretty right-wing Trump uh, ideologue, I guess. Mm, okay. So I don't know. But, uh, but I, and, you know, another part of me realizes that the some of these extreme right-wing uh, Republicans, uh, they seem to actually be the ones most courageous in pushing on the alien disclosure front. So you, maybe part of them being crazy politically is also what gives them the courage to go up against the secret keepers. So it's kind of an interesting. interesting. Yeah. Have you heard anything about that? I just um, I should have had the time to to come back and listen to the whole thing, but I think I heard something about Stephen Greer um, was reporting on something they're going to be. Uh, cutting off funding for for this branch um, yeah. of of military that that's these doing these covert things. Have you picked up on any of that? Yeah, I, that is one of the tactics that it seems that I mean that's the way Congress could get at this. They can they can target the money and uh, part of the way this secret has been kept and operating has been they've been rechanneling taxpayer money, government money into you know uh, secret UFO reverse engineering programs that are hidden within legitimate programs that have appropriate congressional oversight. And that would be illegal. That's something that David Grush said has been going on. Uh, Stephen Greer has been saying it's absolutely illegal the way they've been channeling money to this. And they should be able to, if they pull enough threads, expose that. And I, I have to assume it, it seems like something is going on behind the scenes. It seems like some people in Congress and the government are clearly on the side of disclosure and exposing this, and they are pulling the threads on this. And then there's another side of the government, the secret keepers that are doing everything they can to delay this as much as possible, delay the revelation. And, and, and then there's a chance that actually they're all on the same team they're just trying to do this at a slow pace because they are you know they're they're just uh you know they slowly are letting out ufos are real but then they delay 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 and then they say okay the ufos are real and the u.s government's hiding their contact with aliens and then they delay 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 and then they sort of backtrack a little bit and but it seems you know, it, it seems like they're just like they are letting it out piece 
by piece slowly over time. I'm not sure what it's building up to, but well, I mean, for one thing, it seems to be now squarely in the hands of the executive branch because the secret keepers were saying you don't have clearance to know the answers to these questions, but the executive branch has to have clearance. They're the ones. And, and so that means it's all about the president. It's all about this presidential election. They're yeah. basically saying all the knowledge is going to be held in the executive branch. We're not going to give it to Congress. So that just that means it's all about the next election. Who's who are we going to elect? Because they're the ones that are allowed to know what's going on. I mean, can you imagine that the whole nine yards is is um, disclosed? Um, and this this is part of what I, I wanted to talk about. But um, so, yeah, let, let's uh, go into that. I just want to make sure you're you're what else is going on there politically? Um, I, mean, I think that's the uh, I mean, that's the state of where it is as far as the the government disclosure piece is going um yeah what do you yeah what did you want to get into oh my goodness i i i went down a rabbit hole it came up in my youtube um you know echo chamber i guess you could call it but it's it was a number of uh, people talking about this these videos that have been put out by this woman on uh, named sabrina wallace and uh she's over on odyssey.com i i don't i don't know if she's on youtube uh she i wouldn't be surprised if she's not given that uh, youtube does have a lot of um censorship right now but um she was basically saying that she was part of all of that uh, of all of that uh technology going she's so over my head in terms of her brilliance at, at first i found it so so shocking that um you know i wanted to say oh no she's schizophrenic or that like that uh movie you know beautiful mind mm -hmm. um but she's basically saying she she knows all of this information she's putting herself out there i, I guess as a whistleblower uh, the last thing I saw on her, she said, download this PDF, you know, I may be taken offline, whatever. So <laughs> it, it's too much for my little brain to, to grasp, but um, it's all about ele the electronic warfare that's going on right now. And um, I mean, she's got other other videos out there and I, you know, I don't know if I should be, um, you know, <sighs> I'm a little, I don't know about her, basically. I, I'm hoping that what she, I'm hoping she's for real because it would really blow the lid off all of this. Um, but, you know, nowadays I, I feel like we got to be careful about what's real and what's not real. Um, but if anybody wants to go down that rabbit hole, uh, there is a, um, there is a, there is a video out there on, odyssey.com what is i'm trying to look for the name of her i guess it's just called electronic warfare is that what it is uh um so it, that would get you there anyway hmm. um she's basically saying that we have been biohacked and uh that that the satellites and everything have been all set up in, in order to biohack all all of the uh Wi-Fi infrastructure and all of it, and then she, of course, ties in the uh, the the we'll say it recent medical intervention um, with all of this, and says that we have been biohacked and and that they can now read us like a book. They can actually kind of tune us in, you know, like a like listening into a radio station or something or. I, I don't know, it's way over my head and it's way down the rabbit hole. Um, but I guess the point I'm wanting to bring up is people who are listening to this, and she may not be the only one, may, there may be others that are saying that what it's doing is spilling the beans, if it's true, of, of this technology that they have developed going way back into the 50s. And... Um, and how they have been secretly using it uh, to to uh, hack our hack us basically, 
Uh, and I want to say I've just stumbled on this this morning, so it's not like I have, you know, done a deep study on her. Um, but again, you know, I'll say it again, this woman, Sabrina Wallace on odyssey.com. Um, I would love to know your take on it, Matt, because it, it's possible. She brings in all kinds of, you know, quantum language and physics, and uh, she's an absolute genius. So um, if we have been biohacked and our thoughts, oh, and she talks about, what is it called? Um, synthetic telepathy mm -hmm. okay so they know how to to uh, implant telepathic messages and extract our thoughts or whatever and hack into our dreams and so if this is the case let's, if, let's go way out into space here and if this is the case what are we to do okay now me coming from my uh, b background in, in Buddhist studies and Eastern philosophy, it, it seems pretty clear to me that we are being challenged to um, figure out who we are real quick, because because if we're being manipulated in any way, um, we need to find out how to get out of that. If if indeed we even want to, they might, you know, on that movie, The Matrix, that guy, what's his name? He goes into the into the matrix because he wants to be there right he likes the the drama and the show and the mistake apparently and hmm. so um so we have a choice we can we can uh we can either use this opportunity to go deeper into our own true self our real nature um or we can i don't know we can we can gosh matt Help me. I don't know. What what are we going to do if this is true? <laughs> well, let's let's yeah. delve into this telepathy issue, because I have a lot of thoughts on that. And it's I think it's a really important subject to just yeah. explore, because I've I've heard several um, UFO or, uh, you know, alien disclosure whistleblowers uh, and different sources that have definitely indicated uh one that aliens have telepathic technology it might be a biological uh like literally like a biological telepathy that they have um so there's that has definitely been said and then there is definitely indications of research into synthetic telepathy and i've even um which makes perfect sense if if you imagine that at some point you know, the, the Department of Defense found out that aliens exist and they have telepathy, of course, they would want to research, oh, how do we use telepathy? That's a of great course, technology. Yes. They would definitely work on that. And also how to weaponize it. I mean, because that's what that's what military people do. If you can do something, can you also use it as a weapon? So it, it uh, so there's that. And it, it seems to, I think it might even connect to, uh, I don't know. I have this instinct that it might connect to Havana syndrome, this story of people getting these strange um, medical issues just from possibly being in a, a certain place, like in a hotel room in a Mexico or something that they, th that someone might be trying to test uh, oh telepathic this, weapons on she, people in yeah. these hotel rooms. And that's, she actually talks about how, how, you know, we're being affected um sabrina wallace does so mm -hmm. yes we yeah well well and then there's um there's the ice cube station in antarctica which uh stephen greer uh has a whistleblower i forget his name who who talks about everything he learned about this antarctica ice cube station uh which talks about uh which has a neutrino detector and that's this is all absolutely true that we have a neutrino detector and, and a station called ice cube station in Antarctica, but they say it just tries to detect neutrinos in the universe, and it can give you a little bit of information about quasars and things like that. But this guy says that it can do way more than that. It Because it can see neutrinos, uh, which are tiny particle or quantum particles that go through almost all matter, they, they, they're they flying through the universe, and they give you, if you catch one, it gives you an indication about a very significant nuclear event wherever it came from 
And uh, he says it's it's a basically like a telescope that shows you where every device or machine in the universe that has any sort of nuclear uh, reaction going on, you can just see it clearly exactly where it is. So it's it's incredible surveillance device. Oh my goodness. And oh. yeah, and so that one is powerful, but it, it led me to, I don't know, it immediately made my mind realize that um, the kind of surveillance they're getting from that, I don't know, my brain immediately went to what if you could surveil a mind and what was, and you know what, I think he actually, I don't know if it was him or someone similar to him that said they also have that, that they have a similar type of device that can literally just target a person's brain and listen into it or even try to insert thoughts into it. Yeah, I believe it was the same guy. Okay, it's the same technology this woman's talking about. Yeah. Now yeah. what? Oh my goodness. I mean, if you know, it's one thing to know that maybe they can listen in on our thoughts, but what if they're controlling our thoughts? <laughs> that's that's uh that's pretty mind-breaking for me. Yeah. Well, it, I was thinking about this literally last night, you know, I'm doing my best thinking as I'm just closing my eyes, trying to, you know, not really trying to go to sleep, just trying to understand the mysteries of the universe. Yeah. And, and I, I basically had this, um, you know, this thought of, uh, there's these different levels, it seems, of other players. Like there's like one level would be big brother, the idea that a government is listening in on our phones and stuff, just like snooping using technology that around us to to listen into us. Some people totally believe this is happening. Like you're, they believe your your iPhone is listening in, and and it's actually kind of funny in the uh, Bob Lazar movie that Jeremy Corbell uh, put out. He uh, he actually said he and Bob Lazar went on a walk in deep into the woods and they bob lazar said on this walk i think they were doing this on purpose to test and bob lazar said that he had some element 115 this secret element that basically is the key to anti-gravity he had it hidden and they said this out on the walk and then you know they went home and then like a few hours later bob lazar sends jeremy corbell a text the fbi is raiding my facility my my office and they they believe they were listening they somehow can just listen on your iPhone, listen on your phone, even if it's not on. And that's how they were monitoring them. So in any case, Big Brother is layer one. They're losing technology. But a Big Brother layer two would be them listening in using something like some sort of like advanced technology that we don't even understand. Maybe Ice Cube Station, you know, maybe you can somehow use neutrinos or something like that to literally target any brain on Earth and listen to it or possibly communicate with it so that would be that would be like a bigger brother you know big brother would be like you know low level technology to listen in bigger brother would be super advanced alien technology that lets them listen in or interfere with our brains and then you know a layer above that would be the uh i, I think I, I sort of visualized two layers above that um one would be I guess I'll just jump to the highest layer would be like God. If there is some sort of God, some sort of super powerful you know, what entity, the, the most powerful entity in the universe, it probably has the ability to also listen into our thoughts and see what's going on, you know, but it's not not as threatening as these low level big brother humans or whatever uh, listening in. And then maybe there's some something between the bigger brother and and a super some sort of ai like um maybe you know there's some maybe the sun or the center of our galaxy the black hole is is actually alive and somehow able to listen into our thoughts but in any case all of that just adds up to i'm highly suspicious that our thoughts are not as private as we think they are and um that's a very disturbing thought yes i mean it's it's like <laughs> It's like we we have to just um, be more responsible for our thoughts, uh, you know, which which kind of taps into all Eastern philosophy anyway. I mean, you know, we we have to watch our thoughts. There's a I'm sure I've uh, you've heard me mention the Taoist. No, is it Taoist? The Lao Tzu 
he says, uh, it's a great quote, it's one of my favorites, and, and my grandfather also, he, he would say, we don't change, we just become more of who we are. But, but the Lao Tzu is, uh, watch your thoughts, they become your words. Watch your words, they become your actions. Watch your actions, they become your habits. Watch your habits, they become your character, and watch your character, it becomes your destiny. <laughs> Oops, I'm sorry about my dog. Um, so th this is uh, this is what we're we're I think being uh, challenged with right now is having to really intentionally direct our thinking processes. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's the idea of privacy. You know, it's it's. Uh... The idea that we're not don't have privacy in our own minds is is such a and it, there's not really I mean it's almost like I think um well I mean it, it leads to the idea of voices in your head, you know. And I, I kind of wanted to ask you about this as a very experienced meditator. Do you do you have any thoughts about when when you meditate, do you ever feel you have voices in your head? And do you have any suggestions to people about how to approach? Oh, goodness me. Yes, I have voices in my head. It's like my, the whole committee. Um, <laughs> and, you know, they're, they're, um, they're, they're because I've been watching movies or listening to shows or, you know, everything that I think about is because of what I've been exposed to during my life. And all I'm doing is rehashing everything and reconfiguring and putting new ideas with other ideas. And, and so this is one level of consciousness and it's kind of always going on in the background. It's like a web of consciousness, all things possible. The uh, Hindus call it the ocean of Maya. So everything is always going on all the time. Uh, thoughts are coming and going. It really depends on how we are tuned which determines what we're going to be picking up and, um, you know, claiming as our thoughts, because they're all everywhere coming and going. It depends on uh, what our attention is on and how our intention, those are two important words. What is the intention behind where we put our attention? Is it coming from, you can ask yourself, is, is it coming from my um fear you know you can look at the chakras right you can break it down into chakra emotional levels am i coming from a place of fear am i coming from a, a place of you know um how can i you know make an opportunity out of this <laughs> you know and and then go into other you know more creative you know make songs about it or poetry or you know philosophy um, but what I what I think what we want to do, in my view, is take our thinking processes, all of the, uh, the infinite possibilities of thought, which is surrounding us at all times, the, the consciousness is around us everywhere all the time. This is mind. We want to draw it into the portal that is loving. It's, a, it's the fourth portal of the heart, the heart chakra. Otherwise, we can just go down into fear and terror and paranoia. And I think there's going to be a lot of people going that way, um, especially as these informations are, are revealed, these, these sciences and technologies that they're using uh, without our um, understanding and, and consent. So there's going to be a tremendous amount of, you know, anger and paranoia and fear uh and so that's all part of it and those are all possibilities um everything is possible at this point we're really going into a quantum reality where nothing is real everything is possible and it really depends on how we want to focus our thinking processes um that's why meditation in my view is the most in important tool for anyone to have right now because that's going to be our our path and our segue into you know staying sane and um in, and managing to bring a higher reality into into this world yeah
Hmm. Do you have any, do you ever feel when you're meditating, when, do you ever feel like you're hearing a voice that is not part of yourself? That is like from what, I mean, something that you might think is possibly either an alien or government, you know, t attempts to insert ideas in your brain. Do you ever feel like yes. something is coming really outside? Yes, I, I do. I, I feel like there's all kinds of influences that are, that are coming in or are trying to come in at, at all times. Um, you know, and, and most of them, by my intention, oh, I only allow what I'm resonating with. It's kind of like, you know, the internet, you know, you go into what you're attracted to, what what you are uh, creating, what, you know, what's your echo chamber look like, you know, um, I, I keep within my comfort zone, which is more in the, uh, you know, uh, in the open, loving, embracing, empathy, compassion area of the heart because it's easy to, to get pulled into fear. It's so easy right now uh, to get pulled into to paranoia and, um, and, and a lot of people are just gonna have to go through that. I think it's kind of the dark night of the soul for some people as they learn this stuff. Uh, it just made me uh, imagine, imagine there are these government secret keepers who have this technology to send out, they're trying to send things to our brains and if, if they're sitting in a control booth, say at this ice cube station, and they're trying to contact one of our minds, and what if our mind can literally just like respond with love and compassion to whoever is sitting at that computer terminal and literally say back to them, hey, you know, you're working for the bad guys. Like we should be sharing technology with all of earth, all of humans to have peace on earth and to have, you know, healthy relationships with aliens and you know it's just like really like try to reach the heart of whatever being is sitting there at the computer and say hey how about you join the good guys how about you stop just manipulating us and trying you know, to yeah. this is a big one um good guys and bad guys <laughs> it's a big one right yeah we don't know what their intention is I think this is just me now. This is, you know, I, I don't know if somebody implanted this in my brain or what, but <laughs> but what I see is that, and I've said this before, I believe that we are being sorted into levels of energy. And um, those who are giving off the most fear and terror and reactivity are possibly the ones that are uh, that they want the most because they're that's a lot of energy they're giving off and they and and so it's almost like maybe we're being used like cattle you know which which cattle gives off the best milk or whatever um and so people who are resonating on those really high dense uh, energies they're, they're not high they're low you could look at it that way low dense uh, energies of fear and terror and and you know all the hell realms. You know that that's good for them. That that's the best quality meat, right? That, and so if you look at it that way, if you're managing to to stay in a more uplifted energy, um, you know whether you're, you know, just not thinking about it, or you know you're going into some creative adventure, or um, that is a little less energy you're just and if you're having fun that's even less energy they don't that's not the kind of energy they're they're wanting to milk um and in, and if you go into a, a compassion realm that you know they they will release you and i think that release is being oh gosh how could i say when she talks about this woman sabrina wallace talks about these um electronic warfare things going on i believe there are these bad guys who you know are just trying to use us for cattle and there's other uh entities now you can uh, maybe they're aliens and i tend to think they are extraterrestrial but they're here to pick up um and guide people who are not going into those energies, who are ready to to go um, into more of a higher consciousness. So it's how how are how's your energy? You can almost feel it in your body. Is my energy feeling fearful? 
angry, betrayed, um, reactive, uh, just ready to explode. I mean, that kind of energy is what they're stirring up. Um, and you can redirect that energy into, into higher realm, a higher chakra, if you will. And that's where meditation comes in. Mm. Yeah, I, I hear that um, the idea that there's some species perhaps that feeds off of negative uh, energy or low frequency energy of fear and anger and stuff. So I, so I hear that idea. And then I, and there's also just a very much more simpler idea that there is a group that uses fear and anger and everything just to control uh, so that they can get humanity to do things right. that benefits it. Um, maybe, which could be as simple as churning money into the military industrial complex, because that helps enrich them. And so, but if, if either of those things are true, if there's a group feeding off of fear and negative energy, like some sort of emotional vampires, or there's a group using fear to control humans in order to enrich themselves, both those groups, I mean, is it possible to communicate with both those groups and say, you know, this is not good what you're doing. Can you, is there anything in their hearts that would make them shift or are they like just so programmed? Like if it's a biological need that they need low frequency fear energy to emotionally feed on and survive, then that's, if that's a biological need, why they can't change it. They would die if they stopped doing that, I suppose. Kind of a, it's like a vampire. It's like the concept yeah. of a, if a vampire has to drink human blood to survive it's going to do that or it's going to die yeah i i tend to think that that it, they're they're going to be there no matter what they they are part of our entire reality they exist they've always existed sometimes they get more concentrated than you know or or diffuse but i think that energy has always been on this in this dimensional uh, this third dimensional reality uh, influencing us the the question is are are we what they want and the way to not be what they want is to redirect your energy so that it's not interesting to them and i think you're right that some people on a different level are are just um could be aliens could be human could, are just using our energy uh as a way to enslave us and, and i think that's been going on for thousands of years um, you know, we feel we have to uh, get up and and do things as a slave in order to to keep the wheels turning in the, in the economy or whatever. In a way, that's a part a kind of a slavery. I, I won't go down that rabbit hole because there's other other angles of looking at that. Um, but so my my personal view is to acknowledge that this is there that anything is possible. If you can think it, it's there, it's out there, it's in the ocean of Maya, it's in the realm of possibility. So let's just know it's there. We don't have to focus on it and turn away from it. It's, and if we turn away, it's like unplugging it. It's like unplugging your energy source from it. Um, you don't have to feed it. That's That's the way I'm looking at it. Very, very interesting, powerful ideas. Well, it's this idea of telepathy is is one of the major, well, one of the things that has pushed me to 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 practice more meditation and to start this uh in this podcast with you because I feel like if this if telepathy is somehow a real thing and possibly something that can be used as a weapon, then it's more important than ever that uh that everyone, you know, has healthy tools to figure out how to navigate meditation in our mind space. So, yeah. And, and meditation, you know, meditation is, is not just for quieting the mind um, and, and not giving anything energy outside of your body. Um, it, it's also an exercise in becoming aware how do we do that? 
if you're out walking around and your mind is busy with all kinds of things, when you become aware, oh, my mind is busy thinking about all kinds of things, that's an awareness. You just caught yourself thinking. That's a self-awareness. And cultivating that self-awareness is what meditation does. So when you feel yourself going kind of into a thought spiral that does not feel good, and suddenly you can say, oh, I'm going in a direction that doesn't feel good, and um, this is not what I want. This gives you choice. Because if you continue to feed these negative spiraling thoughts, you, you can go down to... to uh, the worst of the worst of the worst of, of the depths of hell. I mean, there's no end to how far down you can go. So at some point, before you pick up momentum in that direction, you want to have the skill to say, wait a minute, this I'm thinking about something that doesn't feel good. And I have the ability to choose which way I direct my attention. And meditation gives you that skill. That's a that's really a powerful tool to have especially when there are fearful things happening uh you know you you get you get latched on and and carried away so in buddhism they say the only cause of suffering is attachment grasping mm -hmm. so if we're grasping at some trail of thought that's terrifying um that's going to cause us a lot of suffering so become aware of that early on and set your intention with attention to move away from that feeling yeah did you ever see like in i don't know um how old you are matt but back during the um vietnam war they had these monks protesting in uh i guess it was thailand and they would set themselves on fire yeah you, i don't know if they can even show that on tv anymore yeah but definitely that's know yeah about that. That's the skill of the mind is to be able to sit quietly and no matter what. And, and of course, you know, they burned and they, they didn't jump up and start screaming and running around. They watched and they intentionally turned their mind to wherever they turned it. I don't know, something very, very still and real, I guess. But anyway, the exercises of meditation is primarily about learning and and developing the skill of catching yourself when your mind has gone in a direction that you don't want it to and be able to redirect it yeah well with with that in mind should we uh transition to our our traditional closing meditation yeah let's do that all right so um, we'll do a how long are we going to do today uh well we did run a little over didn't we uh, my my bad say 10 minutes Sure, that'd be great. Okay, great. Well, let's see. Wait, it's um. No, we could do fifteen. Let's do yeah. fifteen. Yeah. All right. Great. Okay. So I will um, encourage anyone who is listening to find a comfortable position. We're gonna settle in for a few minutes, and watch the mind. Watch the body. Let's start with a little bell. We'll follow it from the beginning to the end. When we listen to things, we're tuning into our ears see what's coming in through that sense organ we can actually train our mind to focus on the vibration of the eardrum and that can give us an anchor of focus we can focus on sounds or we could focus on the breath we want to find something that we can call an anchor. Many people will use a mantra they, or japa following with beads. Um, personally, I do like to follow the breath. 
So I'll introduce that. So we'll start to look for the one place where we can feel our breath most clearly. Just watching ourselves breathing in and breathing out. Now I want you to ask yourself this simple question, not, not to go into any thinking about it, but just pose the question, who am I? This is a question that has been asked for many, many thousands of years. Who am I? There is an overall sense that who we are is becoming more clear the more we learn about the threads of reality around us. There is a connection of awareness in each of us. We are the awareness behind all the stories, behind all the drama. We are the awareness. Awareness is not a body. Awareness comes into the body. Awareness is everywhere. Permeating everything. The sun, the moon, the stars, the galaxies. It's right here. Here we are in the middle of all of it. having temporary experiences in human bodies, also in animal bodies and tree bodies and planet bodies. We are the consciousness behind all of it. We are creating it and we're running the show from our deepest level that we have forgotten and that we are reawakening to. Right here, right now, all the good stuff, all the bad stuff, It's all here right now. And we get to choose what we want to think about. We get to choose how we direct our energy.
we are the conscious awareness together all of it it's like we're being born and we're just not quite sure how to use our arms and legs all the good stuff all the bad stuff all in one package, and as Ramdas said, this is the only dance there is. Without the good and the bad, there's nothing, nothing to play with. And now we get to choose how we want to play. When your mind gets carried away, notice it and come back to the breath. Breathing in, breathing out. Consciousness is all around us. It's not just something held inside of our body. Who we are affects everything. You can call it quantum resonance. Our thoughts and feelings affect everything. What do you want to bring to the party? Breathing in, breathing out. What is our relationship to each other? What is our relationship to the planet? What is our relationship to our solar system and galaxy? Who are we? I think it's time for us to decide. Figure out how to use our own hands, our own legs.
we have the power to choreograph our own dance. And right now we have an opportunity to dance with the stars. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, Doro, once again. Until next time. Yep. Take care. Bye-bye.